G'day guys, just wanted to show you um, what I've been working on. This is my new radiant oscillator. Um, I've replaced the, the 3055 transistors um, which were helping to tickle this circuit and get it oscillating with this PWM circuit. So the, the uh, positive line runs into the amp meter straight into the PWM circuit. Another line comes off here into a IN4004 uh, diode goes into my ignition coil, got a little Tesla coil type top on this thing and the negative's just running back through the PWM circuit back to the negative terminal of the battery. Uh, I just want to show you some wireless transmission of energy. I've got another little uh, test, another little ignition coil with a Tesla type thing on the top. I'll just pull it close. We'll see if we can transmit the energy. You see there's about a gap of uh, three centimeters or so. So I've just got a, um, just got this this line hooked up to my ground. Uh, it's not a real ground. It's just um, it's just uh, the metal bit of this table tennis table. Obviously running down into the concrete and whatnot. So it's kind of like a ground. Anyway, it seems to work better when I've got that hooked up. So I'll show you what, show you how it works. Let's get it booted up. As I move it closer, I don't know if you can see that, I might try and turn the lights off so you can work. Right, as you can see, this little LED's lighting up. Uh, as I move it further away, it'll start to dim. So, I can draw a spark off this. I'll probably blow the LED. Yeah, there's some. Uh, wireless transmission of energy bouncing off that first coil getting picked up on the second one it's obviously something uh, Tesla was working on so yeah All right, same setup pretty much it's got a little uh, little coil here with a, one of those 110 volt neons so it usually, it usually needs about 110 volts to set it off just getting near it so it start lighting up Thing near the thing. Obviously, I'm not uh, transmitting it very far, but you can see just by picking up this array of uh, CFLs, if I get closer, it sort of seems to light up. Right, so back to the uh, the light. Got four CFLs here. They're various different types and sizes. On average, they're about 15 watts each. So we've got about 60 watts there. Um, this is running off half an amp at 12 volts. So 6 watts is lighting 60 watts. Um, if I just connect the other side to my ground, I have better, better results. Uh, it does seem to bring the amp drawer up a bit. Um, but the best result I've found is, I know Emo Teep's version, he connects the, the other side of the high voltage line coming off the CFLs to the negative. Obviously we're getting a lot of light, but I found it's even better and there's less amp draw when we hook it up to the neg the, to, sorry, to the positive side. So that's what I'm doing. So high voltage lines going through the CFLs, other side's going back to the positive of the um, of the ignition coil before it hits that diode. Something else that's interesting that you know a lot of you that have been playing around with this stuff will have noticed is anywhere on this high voltage lines, you can just by being near it, no metal contact, um, and these neons will light up just by being near them. This one's um, an interesting effect. I've got the high voltage line running into a little lamp with my modified CFL in it. It's just running through this standard. Um, wall plug quick cable, it's quite a long cable. Uh, the other end of it's just hanging loose, not connected to anything. Um, now it's actually lighting, you can't see it very well. Um, you can see it working there. Now watch what I'm going to do. Uh, if you just if you get close to this, you can actually 
I had a little spark. I don't know if you can see it. It's just with my finger. So, I mean, this isn't connected to anything, and yet it's somehow acting as some sort of capacitance and picking up the radiant energy. So I'm going to plug this cable just into that, and the other side to a light, and I'm just isolating up one light out of the array, the other side's running into my ground. So I can light this light up even more than the first. And that's just on the, the case, the, the cover type thing that directs the light, which isn't connected to any high voltage. See if I touch it, it sort of seems to discharge into me, if I can turn it on or not. I just want to show you the spark, this is just uh, grounded my screwdriver. My battery's a bit dead, but I was getting at least a centimetre spark here. Show you how this um, energy is bouncing back through the, uh, the low voltage side, the 12 voltage side. It only seems to happen when I um, have all these CFLs hooked up, so the other side is just grounded. I get sparks coming off everything pretty much. Even the heat sink, these bits, the positive terminal, negative terminal. Positive terminal of the um, ignition coil. It's high voltage coming th back through this this diode, and I'll show you something to demonstrate. Now I've just got a um, a wire running from before the diode, coming down to this little coil with this uh, little neon on there. And if I get close to it, start touching it, you can see it lighting up. So there's enough voltage getting kicked back here to light one of these 100 volt neons, 110 volt, whatever they are. Uh, it seems to work better. Uh, got another wire. It seems to work better when I've got this side hooked up to an antenna. And even better when I create spark gap. Can't see it well, but Now I've got this side of, of the coil, the neon, hooked up to a little spark gap. And the other side is hooked up to nothing, just a little wire. And for some reason, whenever I touch it, the spark gap increases. So this is coming off the 12 volt side, giving all this high voltage feedback. Now I'm going to the spark that's connected to nothing. <laughs> Again, it seems to work better just when I'm holding the, the 